everyone, welcome to Sunday Night Live. Tonight, my guest is Thibaut de Montalembert. He doesn't need an introduction. Thibaut de Montalembert is Mathias. He plays Mathias in Call My Agent. He's also in a theatre play right now in Paris called Un Président Ne Devrait Pas Dire Ça. I'm delighted to have him as a guest and I see he's here. Welcome everyone. And feel free to ask your question. Hello, Justine. Feel free to ask your questions for Thibaut in comment, Justine. Hello. Welcome. Hello. It's magnificent. It's just perfect, right? Yeah. yeah. The background is beautiful. Thank you so much for coming to Sunday Night Live. I'm delighted. I put a little bit more sound. <laughs> Well, I'll do it too. And then we'll, we'll be good after our tech check. <laughs> so yes, I was saying you don't need an introduction actually, because I guess everyone has watched Call My Agent. And you said in an interview that uh, you have an actor ego, an ego. And then after Call My Agent, everyone recognized you in the streets and it felt pretty good. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is something to be dangerous when it happens when you are very uh, you, suddenly you are under the light and uh, but it happens to me when I was more or less 50 so uh, okay it's nice I take it so it was a blessing right of kind of yes kind of blessing mm. but it's true that before that you had a very long and successful career and you've started um uh, you studied at cours florent and then théâtre des amandiers so everyone talked about this uh this uh school because of the film uh, les amandiers what was so special about this school well, you know, at that time, you have in France, you have three or four national schools. You have the conservatory, you have uh, La Planche, uh, uh, the Strasbourg School also. But uh, the first kind of uh, was, uh, the school was in a theater. Mm -hmm. A very mm -hmm. famous theater director in Europe. Mm -hmm. he did he did this school uh we, we were second uh how you say uh i can't hear you very well it's breaking a little bit Maybe, uh, um, yeah. uh, si je mets earphones, maybe it's better yes let's try it this way sorry <laughs> to keep bugging you <laughs> Wait. Voilà, oh. c'est saccadé. Someone says it's saccadé. Is it okay on my end? Hello? Is it oui. better or not? Yes? Uh, ça a l'air mieux. Could uh, be better, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, I think it's better. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, the uh, the the school of the Amandier was um, a national kind of a national. We we have a big uh, uh, exam before. Uh, it takes one hour, one year to 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 you know. We have many st different stage, different different steps uh, to to be uh, received in the school. At the beginning, we were two thousand five hundred. At the end, nineteen person. Mm -hmm. was uh, and um, today all of them are working more or less mm -hmm. well maybe 80 percent of the 19 are doing that job you have uh, mm -hmm. Valeria Boniteliski you have uh, Eva Ionesco um, Vincent Perez Agnès Jaoui a lot of were people you the, are... were you the same year no 
Yes, we are all. Oh. In the, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. We were Where together. Wow. Yeah. We were together. I, yeah, and the film, the film, the Amandia are talking about that that time, that particular um, school, and and yeah. Okay, I really need to watch it. Yeah, you have to it's watch really it. Great. Absolutely, definitely. Yes. Yeah, Not because sure. it was really all, also, you know, it, it was uh, during the the AT, mm -hmm. and it was. Mm -hmm so special at that time you know we don't have uh yeah well it was quite different from now we don't mm. have all In the terms uh, of... Of, of everything of uh, of of sex of drugs and rock and roll i mean you know it was quite different now we don't have all the, those um what we are we are we are on, on, on today uh, like instagram facebook all that stuff mm -hmm. it was a time when you you can smoke in the in the cafe again yet at that time you know and you can uh well is there is there your character in the in the film because yes wow oh really so who yeah. plays it it's uh i'm sorry for him i i uh it's haha <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, don't it's worry. a guy. It's a guy. When you see the movie, at, at a certain point, uh, Louis Garel, who is playing uh, Patrice Chéreau, try mm -hmm. to kiss. Try to kiss him. That's me. Well, that's okay. not me, but that's my character anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you were. Um, um, sorry, there's a comment saying it's a shame not to have seen this uh, film. Yeah, I know it's a shame. I will do it as up. Um, <laughs> and you were, as a, when you were young, uh, a young boy, you wanted to, you, you didn't know what you wanted to do. It was either an actor or a priest. And I, I'm sorry, you must be very tired of this question because I, in every interview, people uh, bring that up. Um, but can you share the story and why you decided to become an actor? I wanted to be a monk, exactly. A monk, okay. Yes, and uh, well, I love the place I, you, I, I, I choose to, to, to be. It's a monastery in the south of France, very old place, fantastic, but very few women in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the reason. Well, not exactly all the reasons, but a bit of it. A bit yeah. of it. And also you, um, uh, so you, you decided right away, and that's when you joined Le Cour Florent. You said yeah. also in an interview that now you're less religious, but you're still very much about spirituality and very interested in all that stuff, yeah, not about well, the religion itself. I am interested by, in religion because religion is a story of humanity in a way, you know? The <laughs> first thing people, men, the mankind, mankind, uh, try to 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 do is uh, to explain death, and for that they invented religions. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's when you go through the religions, you go through the the the, the story of, of the mankind. Okay, mm -hmm. so I am very interested in that because my my job, in a way, is uh, is to 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 take the the you know to. Endosé. I don't know how you say that in, in English. Uh, Endo to Endosé. embody? Um, yeah, to embody the, the, the story of, of humanity in a way, you know, mm -hmm. through different characters. Uh, but today, yeah, I'm not anymore from this church or this church. My education was very Christian, Catholic. But I don't belong to any any church now anymore. But the spiritual path, mm -hmm. spiritual way, uh, is always the center of my preoccupation. Yeah. Mm. More than even your... even even through my no no because even through my my work you know my yeah. Because it's what, a way yeah it's it's a way you know when you're an actor it's a way to to ask questions to yourself about yourself about 
life also, you know. When you are playing someone, which is somebody who is totally different from you, what you are in real life, you know, mm-hmm. you are exploring uh, different uh, possibilities who belongs to you mm-hmm. also. And, and um, it's, it could be, depend how you think about it, but it could be, um, yeah, a way of spirituality also. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's interesting, you also said in an interview, you played in 2020, I think, in a film called Miss, and you played mm. a transgender woman, and you said mm. every actor should play another gender, the other gender, because you learn so much by doing so. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, you, you are suddenly when you... <laughs> For me, anyway, but I think because I, I, I was I, I spoke with with some friends of mine who who plays women or women who plays men, which is more uh, rare. But uh, um, they always say the same thing: you you suddenly you you find a freedom, of, you know, something we can express. Mm. For example, for a man, you know, which is a cliche, but you don't have to cry. You, you, you don't must cry. You don't must be show your sensibility or emotions, which is uh, a cliche again, but not so much. And uh, when suddenly when you are a woman, those cliche, the people are things, they it belong to the feminine part. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you can do you can you can you can uh, you know l'assumer mm-hmm. Assu- assume, so, no? so you uh it was a really great exper- experience someone said lola forever so that was the name of your character lola yeah lola yes lola <laughs> yeah. yeah yes yes yeah it was so, a real great experience you know and i have to train i have to train to i have to 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 learn how to walk with uh, 12 inches centimeters you know i have to, to i i i i i used to to wear it in my apartment and to oh really yeah to find how to move you know in life with that and with uh breath with everything you know so um my wife was a little bit uh, pissed off <laughs> after a while <laughs> and that has it changed you you said that you feel more you feel more free when uh, when you do that yeah. because you're liberated from every cliche or yeah. related to yeah. gender yes yes and you can I don't know, you can use, uh, yeah, your femininity, you know, your, yeah, yeah. Your, 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 the other part of yourself, because mm-hmm. um, I, I'm, when you look a baby, in, you know, with the um, echography, mm-hmm. uh, sex is something is happening very late. It's not at the beginning. Yeah. At the beginning, you have a human being, and after that, the sex is coming. Mm-hmm. So we can we can imagine that at the beginning we are both. We are, and at a certain point, something's choose one side or another. But we are both, mm-hmm. both sides, both both gender. So it uh, it goes in the it supports this point that you said that your work on spirituality and your work as an actor really join uh, and uh, go together? For me, yes. Yeah. Much, maybe more on, 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 uh, on theater than movies, you know? Oh, because, how so? Oh, well, you know, theater is at the beginning, at the very beginning, theater is, uh, happens in Greece. And it was um, it was a sacred uh, event, mm-hmm. you know. It was uh, the place where the human beings are talking with gods. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you have this sacred holy things the people are coming and sitting in the dark and uh, they are listening a story about themselves mhm mm i understand and the uh, i guess the um, the reaction um, of the public is also yeah, way yeah 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 there is some ceremony something you know yeah happening when you play mhm mm mm -hmm. So speaking of plays, I came to see you in uh, Un Président Ne Devrait Pas Dire Ça. It mm. was fantastic. Uh, Thanks. Until when are you uh, playing it? Are you, uh, is it possible uh, to see you? Yeah, it's possible to see this play, uh, Un Président Ne Devrait Pas Dire Ça. We play until the 22 of uh, April. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe longer, but I don't know yet. We can say 22th of uh, April. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, au Théâtre Libre à Paris, Boulevard de Strasbourg. The Théâtre Libre was the oldest, uh, uh, what the name of the theater? C'était le, le, oh, yeah. uh, I... Yes. I didn't know it actually. It was the first yeah. time I came to see the uh, theater. Yes, it was a, an old theater built in the 1920 around yeah. that. L'El Dorado. L'El Dorado. Dorado. Okay. Which is very famous because it's a place where you have uh, Maurice Chevalier, uh, Zizi Jean Mer, a lot of singers start on the, at that place, you know. Ah, and become, okay. And they, they became very famous after that. Mm -hmm. And for those who haven't seen it, it's an adaptation of the book of the two journalists of Le Monde. Un président yeah. ne devrait pas dire ça. Mm. It's not the exact adaptation. That's no. Really mm -hmm. Well, the book, the book, uh, the book came out. I think it's uh, two two sixteen or two two seventeen. 2017 or 2016, I don't remember exactly. At the end of uh, François Hollande, the uh, president at that time, at the end of his mandate of his five mm -hmm. years. And um, the, the, the book was a hit, absolutely, because it never happened that before that two journalists has had this um, opportunity to, to, to be with for five years because they follow him for five years in his, in the exercise of his power. Mm -hmm. you know, and they are 61 um, uh, meeting together and uh, François, Hollande, François Hollande are speaking very freely and completely uh, about, about what he's experimenting or what he's doing, you know. So um, when the book came out, come out um, uh, it cost him his re-election. Mm -hmm. They did an adaptation, and in this adaptation, it's not exactly the book because um, the book is it's uh, many many it's sixty one you know interview, which is very interesting on the book, but not maybe on stage. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it could be a very long play. Yeah, it could be a very long play, but it's um, it's the play is inside um, uh, uh, um, the redaction. Redaction, we say that redaction. The newsroom of Le Monde. The newsroom, not le, la rédaction. Oui, la rédaction d'un oui. grand journal. Oui. Mm -hmm. uh, the the newsroom of a big big newspaper, you know, like le, which is the Monde. So you have this. You have uh, uh, the the you you saw one journalist fighting with this. How do you call the editor? Chief redactor. Uh, editor. In how do you say? Editor. What? In chief. With the yes, editor, editor in chief. chief. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, mm -hmm. he's fighting with her because he he had he had to to wrote some papers and he, him is. He is focused, the guy is focused on the write, writing of his books. And he's with, um, a, a, she, he, he works with a young woman, a, a young journalist. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they have, you have this gap between the two of them because she's 
really much more younger than him. And it's two way of to, 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 to understand and to, yeah, to feel the journalism. Mm -hmm. And you have, you have the verbatim of the presidency. You have some interviews and some, uh, you have the, some interviews with the president and what the presidents are saying on the play, it's exactly what François Hollande was told mm -hmm. them, uh, during this, uh, those uh, interviews. Mm -hmm. So has he come to see the play, François Hollande? He's not okay. coming in, yeah, yet, no? but maybe, maybe, why not? Because yeah. it's, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, the way we are, we, we saw him after the play, it's okay. I mean, the guy, you know, he did his job and he did some mistakes, but mm -hmm. pas, on se moque pas de lui. No, it's quite... Um, it's quite soft, actually. It doesn't look stupid or anything. No, no, because he, well, he is not stupid. Yeah. Uh, at all. <laughs> it's not stupid, really. But, well, he missed some things. Yeah. Uh, and many questions about your upcoming projects. So I know you have one uh, with Scarlett Johansson. Can you tell us yeah. about that one? Well, it's a little, it's a little one, you know, it's a little uh, cameo I did uh, on the mm -hmm. first, uh, first movie, uh, uh, the script, uh, Christine Scott Thomas direct. Um, oh, it's called, okay. yeah, and, and uh, it's um, this movie, um, uh, the title is uh, My Mother's Wedding. Mm -hmm. And it's not her story, but well, based on certain elements of his her own story and uh, it's these three sisters and they have this big wedding of their mother with she's uh, married for the third time and okay. i play a french guy which is a billionaire and he he's very much in love with uh cena miller which is uh who is one, one of, of the, the three sisters. sisters? Yes, one of the sisters. So you have you have Scarlett Johansson, Cinnamon Miller, and and um, and uh, ah, oh, oh my yes. God, she's killing me for that. <laughs> she uh, ah, f ça va revenir. Ça va revenir, exactement. And um, <laughs> and is Cinnamon Miller in love with you back? Uh, no, 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 one no way. not at all. I'm uh, well. She doesn't know exactly. You know, he's like a, he's like a, a fly on a flower. You know, he's uh, turning around like this. You know, okay. I I I, I arrived on the, in the middle of the wedding by helicopters, and I stay well. You know, twenty minutes, say hello to everybody, have a hug with her, and some scene with the mother with Christine. And after that, I go back. Okay. I, I left okay. by with my, my... Well, it's funny to do it. It was very funny. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of questions about the sequel. Une suite de la série 10% est-elle prévue? Si oui, accepteriez-vous à nouveau de reprendre votre rôle? Certainly, but uh, it's not, it's not a, a, a season. It's, it's going to be a, a film. Mm. The, um, Fanny Herrero, uh, she's actually writing the movie. Okay. The script. And the script must be, should maybe next spring. Next spring. Next spring, yes. Okay. And everyone is back? Camille Cotin, the entire cast? I don't know, but I suppose yes, you know. We, lo we all love this. We all love this, so... Oh, God, I can't wait. And in, in the meantime, you also have a mini series called uh, Franklin. Am I right? Well, she, yeah, a mini series, but a very big, it was a very, very big adventure. You know, we, we, we were uh, shooting it for seven months. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's a series called, I know, I'm not sure because I think they are not sure also. It's Apple produced this. And, okay. Uh, for the moment, it's the Grandmaster, and it's a story about Ben Franklin coming mm -hmm. in France 
asking money, uh, weapons and men uh, to France for the um, uh, American Revolution against the English. But mm -hmm. what we don't know is that um, Ben Franklin stay in France, in Paris for nine years, which is quite big time, long yeah. time. He stayed there with his uh, uh, grand grandchild. And uh, at the beginning, he was very well known as a, as a scientist, you know, as a philosopher, scientist and politician, but nobody believed really in that story of, of uh, American Revolution against the English, mm -hmm. except one man who was the uh, foreign minister of uh, Louis the Sixteenth, called. Oh, and uh, that's you. And that's me. And that's uh, my my character, who was uh, Le Comte de Vergennes, mm -hmm. Charles de Vergennes, and uh, they both worked together more or less. And uh, they try to convince what they, they succeed to do it, uh, to convince the government to uh, respond to the uh, American uh, uh, desire. And mm. it, well, it, it was, it cost us French, maybe the revolution, because we, uh, we, we gave them a lot of money, a lot of money. And after that, well, you know, it was a little bit like bankrupt. Uh, but also, it's one of the reasons why the American came and rescued France and Europe uh, during the, the First World War and the Second World War, too. Oh, okay. You know, as a, as a repay, in a way. Mm -hmm. you know? So, Independence Day is thanks to your character, Comte de Vergen. 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 Yes. What, mm. sorry, what, what did you say? Uh, it, the independence of the United States is partly thanks to this uh, Yes, to, to this guy, yeah, diplomat, mm -hmm. who was a very discreet man, but as, well, you know, we, nobody knows him really, you know, but he was, he, he was very influent mm -hmm. and maybe in a way is the father of the modern way of di doing diplomacy. Mm. I see. Uh, yeah. Mm. And, and you, the tournage, and there was a comment actually. Um, someone was asked about your upcoming project. You said, "Pourriez-vous parler français car je ne comprends pas l'anglais?" Suite à ma question posée. So Alors, qu'est-ce qu'on fait? <laughs> On a qu'à switcher pour la fin en français. Et ok, d'accord. <laughs> le tournage était à Saint-Malo, n'est-ce pas? Uh, le tournage était beaucoup à Versailles, autour de Versailles dans des mm -hmm. châteaux, un peu à Saint-Malo, effectivement. Euh, mais ça a duré sept mois, donc euh, y avait, y avait, c'était vraiment extraordinaire. Il y avait une équipe, euh, euh, le, 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 ré, le réalisateur qui est Tim Van, Pat Van Patten, c'est lui qui a fait la création des Sopranos, de Sex ah, oui. and the City, uh, The Wire, uh, and so on. C'était un type vraiment fantastique. Le showrunner qui est, qui est euh, Ellis Kirk, qui est euh, euh, celui qui a, qui a créé les Simpsons. Mm -hmm. euh, wow. Et pratiquement à tous les, tous les chefs de poste étaient soit euh, euh, oscarisés, soit césarisés. Et il y avait une... C'était fou, quoi. Il y avait une qualité de, de, de talent et une, un amoncellement de talent. Et alors, dans les acteurs français, il y a Lily Vinsanié, qui a un rôle extrêmement important. Il y a Jeanne Balibar, il y a Olivier Rabourdin. Il y a... Et puis, il y a les Anglais aussi. Et il y avait ce, ce, cet acteur que moi, j'adore, qui est Eddie Marson. Mm -hmm. Eddie Marson, euh, qui est un fantastique acteur. Il y a puis, puis plein d'autres. Donc, il euh, y, y a à peu près une centaine de personnages là-dedans. C'est wow. complètement foisonnant. C'est une méga production. Grosse production. Grosse production. Et ça sort quand Je pense que les Américains voudraient le sortir autour de, de uh, Thanksgiving. So, novembre, novembre, par là, octobre, novembre. Ok. Bon, bah, on a hâte. Et encore d'autres projets Comment est-ce que tu fais en termes de... Euh, en termes de d'agenda pour que, que tout, <rire> tout ne se chevauche pas. Par exemple, là, tu es au théâtre tous les soirs en ce moment. Oui, là, je suis au théâtre pratiquement tous les soirs et je commence une série avec, avec euh, Elisabeth Moss qui s'appelle The Veil, pour l'instant, peut-être ça changera le titre, mm -hmm. euh, que je commence à tourner demain, d'ailleurs. Ah. Ou, 
Oui, oui. Et donc, tu tournes la journée. Et alors, pour moi, ma, ma partie, oui. Mais okay. c'est une série qui est entre le Moyen-Orient, la Turquie, la Turquie, euh, la France, l'Angleterre, un peu les États-Unis aussi. D'accord. Elisabeth Moss qui était dans The Handmaid's Tale, c'est ça oui, yeah, yeah, Ah, c'était yeah. bien dans ça. Yeah. Oui, et, et bon. Mad Men aussi, etc. Enfin, elle a fait plein de choses. Super actrice. Et donc là, tu joues quoi de, dans ce... Je fais un officier de la DGSE. Je fais un officier supérieur de la DGSE qui est une espèce de geek qui passe son temps sur, sur, le, sur, les, sur le web et qui est enfermé dans un une espèce de bunker sans fenêtre. C'est assez... <rire> ouais, c'est bien. Ah, c'est bien, tu as toujours des rôles. Donc, tu as le journaliste en ce moment au théâtre, tu as le diplomate, oui. euh, l'officier le, euh, le, de la DGSE. Oui, le, trans, oui. le, le travesti, non. enfin tout. Oui, tout. <rire> <rire> bon, et alors, j'ai dit euh, au début qu'on ne parlerait pas de mode, mais bien sûr, je ne peux pas m'empêcher. Euh, bien pour, sûr. Euh, pour finir, quel est, comment est-ce que tu décrirais ton style et en quoi aussi euh, <rire> En quoi les, les costumes t'aident à rentrer dans ton personnage Alors, on va recommencer comme ça plutôt. Première parce question. que c'est vrai ah, que... Ouais. Parce que c'est... Alors, il y a, y a une chose. Il y a une chose, c'était un vieil acteur qui m'a donné le truc. C'est un, un, un vieil acteur qui s'appelait Henri Vierlejeu, qui était un merveilleux comédien, qui était un, un des grands rôles du cinéma français des années 60-70. Et euh, j'avais joué au théâtre avec lui, et Henri me disait, moi, les costumes, oui, ok. Mais par contre, chez moi, j'ai 100 paires de chaussures, et c'est moi qui choisis mes chaussures. Il me dit, parce que la chaussure te donne la démarche. Et quand ah bon tu marches... Mais oui, parce que quand on marche avec des bottes, quand on marche avec des tennis, quand on marche avec des chaussures en cuir lacé, on ne marche pas de la même manière. Mmh. Donc, euh, trouver la démarche du personnage, déjà, c'est trouver quelque chose. D'accord. Et donc, euh, Et après, tu... mais c'est toi je... qui choisis les chaussures ou c'est toujours le costume designer non, 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 on les choisit ensemble, voire c'est moi qui les choisis. J'ai de plus en plus tendance maintenant à anticiper euh, les, les fittings, euh, les essayages. Ah oui. pour, euh, et je vais, je vais regarder par, dans les magasins à droite à gauche des choses pour, pour imaginer un peu et créer quelque chose, oui, bien sûr. Ah, et ils aiment ah, souvent le... ça parce que, parce que ils, ont, voilà, ils ont évidemment des idées, évidemment des choses, mais... mais euh, quand, quand c'est pour des choses contemporaines, parce que évidemment, quand c'était pour le conte de Vergène et que j'étais en, en costume 18 e ça. Euh, <rire> tu peux pas mettre des sneakers. Voilà, euh, c'est ça. Oui. J'avais. Euh, puis les perruques, enfin bon. De, de, bon. <rire> oui. <rire> Mais par exemple, pour euh, 10%. C'était toi qui choisis. 10%, je, je leur avais dit au départ, je voudrais qu'ils qu s'habillent chez Paul Smith. Ah! Donc, en fait, tous les costumes que j'ai dans 10% viennent de chez Paul Smith. Ah bon Parce que, Il le sait, oui. Paul Smith Oui, bien sûr, il le sait, oui. <rire> Ça a dû lui faire plaisir. Il le sait, je l'ai rencontré. Et c'est un type très sympathique, en plus, vraiment sympathique. Et, euh, et oui, parce que je pensais qu'il y avait ce côté un peu vieille France, euh, euh, de, de, de garçon de bonne famille, qui a peut-être fait quelques études en Angleterre. Enfin, voilà, moi, je le voyais un peu comme ça. Donc, il est en... En, en Paul Smith. En Paul Smith. OK. Et aussi, Catherine Deneuve disait qu'elle, c'était le parfum qui l'aidait à rentrer dans son personnage. Absolument. Et ça aussi, je fais. C'est-à-dire que quand j'ai des grands rôles, vraiment, il y a un parfum par personnage. Ouais. Ah je oui? cherche. Oui. Donc, par exemple... Ça... Le... Mmh, pardon. Par exemple, pour le théâtre aussi, pour un président ne devrait pas dire ça, c'est un parfum. Moins, moins. Euh, moins. Parce que, en plus, ça, si j'avais dû prendre un parfum pour, pour euh, euh, mon personnage. Dans un... Non, pas pour François Hollande. Moi, je ne fais pas François Hollande, je fais les journalistes. Oui. Mais, mais euh, pour le un président, euh, peut-être qu'il n'aurait pas eu de parfum du tout. OK. Ce qui est aussi... Parce que, euh... Oui, parce que c'est un parfum, c'est déjà une présence, c'est déjà quelque chose qui se raconte. Mm -hmm. Un journaliste doit être euh, un peu comme un espion, non C'est-à-dire que c'est quelqu'un qui ne doit pas laisser de traces et qui ne doit pas, qui doit être en retrait et au contraire à l'écoute de ce qui se passe. Donc, s'il arrive avec euh, une identité euh, trop forte, olfactive déjà, ou ça peut créer quelque chose qui n'est pas souhaitable en face. Oui, un sillon olfactif, ça le, 
ça le révèle un peu trop. Un peu trop. Mm -hmm. Et pour euh, Ben Franklin, pour ton rôle de diplomate Oui, alors j'avais un, un, un parfum euh, très particulier, oui. très particulier, qui s'appelle Le Régent et qui est une des plus vieilles parfumeries de Paris. Je ne suis pas bon du tout parce qu'avec les noms, euh, qui est une parfumerie qui se trouve dans le deuxième arrondissement. Ah, qui date ah de... c'est pas Nose Non, c'est pas ça. Non, c'est une toute petite boutique qui est vraiment, on a l'impression qu'on est, euh, on, on retourne en arrière, d'un siècle en arrière. Et ils avaient fait ce, ce parfum euh, qui était, euh, qui portait le nom du fameux, du fameux diamant qui s'appelait le Régent. D'accord. Voilà. Euh, il faut qu'on regarde. Il y a quelqu'un qui dit Bully, mais non, Officine euh, Universelle Bully, c'était pas. Non, euh, non, non. non, 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 non. Et je ne peux pas regarder sur mon téléphone parce que je suis en train que... de parler. <rire> tu ne vas pas nous quitter comme ça. Bon, et eh bien, de toute façon, ce live termine, arrive à sa fin. Mais merci infiniment d'être venu. Je suis trop contente depuis le temps qu'on en parlait. Merci à toi, merci. Et puis, j'encourage tout le monde, tous nos amis à aller voir un président ne devrait pas dire ça parce que vous avez encore le temps jusqu'au 22 avril. Oui, oui, parce qu'en plus de ça, bon, on en a parlé un peu comme ça, mais c'est une pièce qui est… On apprend des choses. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui, en regard de ce qui se passe dans la rue, c'est intéressant parce que ça, voilà, ça, ça stimule la, un peu la réflexion. Et, et c'est assez drôle, non Oui. Enfin, c'est toi qui l'as vu, mais c'est vraiment… Ce il faut, non, mais ce qu'il faut si, dire, parce qu'on se dit… C'est vrai qu'une pièce politique, on se dit okay, on va s'emmerder, c'est un peu chiant et tout ça. Non, pas du tout. C'est vivant, on apprend plein de trucs et c'est assez drôle. Oui, puisqu'il y a le personnage aussi de… Euh, mince les et de Lison oui, Daniel. Oui. Voilà, c'est ça. Qui, et, elle, oui. elle, qui, elle, est très sur les réseaux sociaux et toi, pas du tout. Euh, voilà. Comme Ce dans qui la est exactement vie, comme que... dans la vraie vie. <rire> <rire> pareil. Parce qu'on a, a quand même dû faire une initiation à l'Instagram oui. Live, mais on a réussi. <rire> c'est bien, tu pourras revenir maintenant. Voilà, exactement. <rire> bah, quand tu veux. Bon, j'imagine que quand tes, euh, tes prochains projets sortiront, ça va être des presse junkets de fou et ça va être difficile que tu viennes dans le live, mais bon, on essaiera. Mais on, on essaiera, bien sûr, absolument, tout à fait. Bon, eh bien, merci infiniment et puis bon merci courage pour le début du tournage demain. Yes. <rire> Allez, bonne soirée, à très Au bientôt. Au Bye. Bye. <rire>